Hey gorgeous and welcome back to my channel. As you can probably see around me, or if you can't see, audio description are not in my abode. I mean these <laughs> lovely people's abodes and these lovely people are Jamie and Sharbet and of course Ollie Bob's behind me, he's a rig. But Hi. Jamie and Sharbet are my lovely friends, but they're also internet sensations. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Tell us about yourself. <laughs> you you big us up too much. <laughs> Oh dear, Sharma, you go first following that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh god, oh no. <laughs> We're Sharma and Jamie, uh, we are a couple. <gasps> I'm a trans man who is white. And I am a bi woman of colour. There we go. Oh, we make internet stuff that is positive and yes. promotes self-love. At least this is what we intend to do. Which is why we love the wonderful Lucy and Ollie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all self-love, a lot of it here. but. Yeah, you should definitely go check them out if you haven't already, but we're gonna talk all about being blind and being trans today, but obviously mm -hmm. all of our opinions are just our personal opinions, but I really absolutely love these guys. We had so many chats about the parallels that we've drawn in our different experiences, mm -hmm. and obviously there is differences as well, mm -hmm. um, just to caveat that, but again, all of our own experiences, and it's just really good to hear from Sharbra and Ollie as well, because we've been couples a similar amount of time. Yeah. We're getting married at a similar time. Yes. And wow. yeah, it's just, we can draw lots of parallels. But it's like, ooh. Yeah. We've both seen these two go through. Yeah, we've kind of, of been there from. Transformations of their lives. Yeah. yeah. From mm. beginning, like from pre like, to post. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Definitely you have and been supportive of that. So yeah, <laughs> you're just basically hearing some friendly chat today. I just really would love to share today a bit about what we have found mm -hmm. in being lovely friends um, and, and kind of just chat to you about feeling validated by each other's experiences. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and like less alone. And, yeah. Definitely. To start with, I think it really, really made me so, my heart so full when I talked about how I found that when I first kind of didn't have a mirror and was ex kind of exploring my self-expression again and you guys know I talk about loads of makeup how, how dysphoric and trapped I felt with not being able to see it dysphoria is very individual to the person mm -hmm. but I guess from your experience Jamie I'd just love to know about a bit about your dysphoria and yeah. how you felt kind of the opposite almost oh, yeah, possibly absolutely. I don't know and I think there's also different types of dysphoria as well and so like specifically for a trans person that would be gender dysphoria and I guess like the concept for me is looking in a mirror and not seeing myself. Like, so what the, the reflection I'm seeing is like almost kind of alien to me. And like, I know that's like me, but I don't recognize myself mm. and just the discomfort around that and just a journey to kind of being able to feel like I could see myself but, yeah. and that I was being myself as well. Again, yeah. yeah. Whereas I kind of had the grief of not being able to see the person I once was yeah. and kind of grieving that sighted Lucy that and it was kind of a physical representation of my grief and trauma that I couldn't then look in a mirror. Mm -hmm. And it's a completely different type of dysphoria. But I don't know whether you guys as partners, I mean, you've definitely seen the shift between kind of mine and Jamie's transitions, if you like, in, in different ways. like. How have you felt uh, as an onlooker, kind of watching us go through these um, these times in our lives? I don't know if you sort of agree, Ollie, but I always felt that Jamie beforehand, it's really funny, even though there were obvious physical changes I and mean, mm. a skill change, if you like, in yeah. learning how to cope with the journey that you were going through mm. pre to post transition, the thing that I noticed the most was the confidence. Like yes. the, the like the comfort in being yourself and mm. embracing that okay this has happened this is who I am and I am at peace with it I'm amazing I love myself it was that confidence change that really mm, made yeah. the biggest difference of like before and after yeah I can yeah. imagine that I think maybe like the the difference might be the the shape of the confidence curve somewhat because I feel with you Lee that it was when you went blind it was a drop yeah and then it kind of like dropped for a fair while and then it's like sort of in more recent years that it's went back up and it's like sort of skyrocketed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whereas i don't know for you jamie was it like a bit more kind of gradual linear, linear? Mm -hmm. yeah i guess more linear and like an internal confidence of who i am but then like an increased fear after socially transitioning of like 
people's perceptions of me and then that gradually going away and me just being like fully comfortable and confident yeah. in who I am. Mm. Yeah. I think that's probably another big similarity between the two of you yes. and the journeys that you've gone through is how society perceives you as yeah. like mm-hmm. less than, inadequate, incompetent in, in so yeah, many ways. Yeah, incapable because mm-hmm. of one thing about us yeah, yeah. and being judged for that one thing and yeah. that one thing only yes yeah. just being seen as that characteristic when yeah. we all have many things about us oh, and, absolutely. you know and I think ultimately it is the comments that we kind of connected on possibly Me. first <laughs> because we are kind of online yeah. putting ourselves in like oh hey I see that presence. too oh my god I yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and you were saying totally. what comments you experienced and then <laughs> comments that we were just like Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, that is the same. You might as well have yeah. a comment section there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's really just, it's it's good to explore how they make you feel because mm-hmm. also you are having, I, I felt for such a long time that I'd go out into the, the wide world and, and get quite a lot of discrimination, possibly like in, in taxis, being refused entry with my guide dog and things, but you don't necessarily have the same discrimination mm. in that way. But I just wanted to chat about you know what how you've kind of come to terms with the fact that there is that discrimination out there but we are these public figures and we've kind of gone we don't care you know yeah. and we we how did you get over that mindset to just be like well i'm unapologetically me oh gosh it's a it's a it's a difficult process and i think for me a, a difference is like sharing online that's where people know i'm trans yeah. like kind of going to the supermarket or something unless people know me from online they don't know so kind of for me I went through this process of having a period where people really would question my gender and and it would cause me a lot of discomfort to not having that anymore and realizing that I have a point of privilege where I am trans you can hide that minority yeah and I am discriminated against for that in some ways and I look out and I see other trans people being discriminated against and laws that discriminate against trans community but for me in like a day-to-day setting going going out and stuff people don't know I'm trans unless they watch me online yeah it affects you as much as you want to as you welcome it into your life yeah yes yeah that's so mm. interesting because I had that for a while. It was like I was passing as kind of sighted mm. because I was visually impaired before I lost my complete vision at age mm. 17. And I just think, you know, I was really just rebelling against the cane and not wanting the cane and bumping into things. And it's like, you know, when that kind of decision was forced upon me, I had to, you know, I had my operation and I had no choice but to kind of accept that having a very physical mobility aid was like, you are blind. Mm-hmm. And I think. Yeah, I think by putting ourselves on the internet, we kind of do that to ourselves, but I kind of wanted to lean into it, but it depends how confident I guess you feel about all of that. I also find that really interesting because you almost can't hide it, Lucy, in the same way that Jamie can, like Mm -hmm. with this this label, um, if you like, not on online. Of course, online you say what you want to say. In real life, like there are so many times where when we've gone to restaurants, for example, you almost have to out yourself, which is like, yeah. it's such LGBT terminology oh, yeah. to me, you know, to be like, oh yeah, like having to come out yeah. as XYZ. But yeah. just seeing how many times you've had to out yourself as disabled and seeing people's reactions, it's it's interesting. Yeah. I think that's a real similarity. I don't know about yeah. you, Ollie, but yeah. I always feel worried about the stigma that comes from individual people. Yeah, I think mm. like you get a lot more sort of individual discrimination. Like it will be based on the person. Mm-hmm. So like some people will go, oh yeah, that's perfectly fine. Like we had such a nice Uber driver the other day when we lost our keys. Mm-hmm. But then like we had Uber drivers, drivers in the past who have like spat on, me. Spat on you. And yeah. Oh my god. Stuff like yeah. that. Like it's it's. A it's whole, very like, you, extreme. But you then you also of... don't see laws like made so much to discriminate against you. But there's of. like a grey area, but equally like you do feel, I don't know whether you guys feel this, but you kind of feel a sense of on edge. As soon as you know how, like what is the shift in your behaviour? How are you going to treat us differently? Mm-hmm. Are you going to kick us out? Are yes. you going to become like mm. almost vicious Hostile. or acidic? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's what I wouldn't want. Like are you going to view us differently even though we're perfectly normal in every other sense, sense of the word. word. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah so. exactly. And it's it's just so interesting. And I guess you picked up a really good difference there as well, Ollie. That like, I guess, do you feel that with disability, people don't treat it as more of a choice? 
Because I feel like with trans issues and LGBT issues, even mm. being a mixed race couple, people almost, the, the the stigma that you get is almost like, well, you've done this to you've yourself. You've chosen this. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd say you, the discrimination you face, you really, really feel that. Yeah, is that people don't see it as a choice, obviously. They, they look at you a lot they, and go, yeah, they, he is so amazing yeah, to they, be they, with they you. They look at my oh, choice. Yeah, oh, they wow. look at Ollie's choices like... That's so interesting. Yeah, as a as a kind of, oh, he's been doing so well yeah. to cope I, with her. Like, I'm, I'm kind of like with her. perceived yeah. as like a, a saint, as yeah. if Lou adds no value to my life. Mm -hmm. And that I'm basically a caregiver who occasionally gets a kiss. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to like a value, oh my gosh, right. and like just not, partner as an yeah. equal, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. not acknowledging like a babysitter, <sighs> and not acknowledging everything that you, Lucy, bring to a relationship. One hundred and ten percent. You know, when you say Sharba that you're that people tend to invalidate your bisexuality, but yes, yeah. I I feel. I don't know, I'm drawing a parallel, whether it's tenuous link, but I I don't know. It's about that invalidation of experience and, yeah. and having a, a sense of self, even though we have been in our partners, respective partnerships for so long. I mean, to be mm. fair, Ollie, we are saints. These guys are really difficult to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Not for that minority label, it's just because they're such bloody demons. It's oh my God, time. what are we being? Talking of spuds and sweet peas, check the link downstairs I will pin it as a top comment and you just need to click on all of their links because they're just fabulous humans. Yeah, also That's they're getting TikTok as well. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure it's to Lucy's like fault. This yeah. <laughs> and subscribe to this wonderful ray of sunshine. Yes, please do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lovely for guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to see more uploads from me in your timeline. Uh, and I hope you have a really great day. See you next week for a new one. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.